Sir, that, which is uh, Lokesh Bhuminathan from Rice University. Um, and he is a third year PhD student with uh, Zach Pitko. Um, and uh, his latest article, which I don't think this talk is about that, but his latest biography yeah. paper talks about it's a deep learning that. framework for estimating crowd density from images of crowds, which is super cool, uh, regardless of whether we are going to hear about it or not. Um, Lokesh also wanted me to mention that he is actively looking for summer internships. So if anyone is in the market for a summer intern, please hit him up. Um, please take it away, Lokesh. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about inference as control. Uh, just premises of this is that uh, sensory observations about the world are invariably ambiguous, and the inference about the world's latent variables is an important computation for the brain. However, computational constraints limit the performance of this computation, and uh, these constraints include energetic costs in terms of uh, neural activity and noise across the channel. Efficient coding is a prominent theory that talks about uh, how limited resources can be best used in order to do this. And in one incarnation of this is the predictive coding theory, which basically says that uh, predictions are being subtracted of the signal so that we don't have to send what we already know. But the predictive coding theory, however, does not account for the cost of all the noise associated with the channels and as well as the energy consumed in sending these predictions. In this particular project, I would be talking about how we can account for all the noise and all the energy costs that are uh, that should be accounted ideally for uh, predictive coding theory. And we will look at what uh, different kinds of results does this lead to. And in order to do this, we formulate this problem as an inference problem in, on a graph, whereby feedback is viewed as a control signal, aiming to maximize how well an inference tracks a given target state. So in order to uh, more concretely talk, define our problem formulation, I'll just use a few slides to do that. Uh, so let's say we have a world state XT that evolves over time, given some sort of linear dynamics, where A is a known matrix. And the observation that we see is basically a corrupt version of this uh, world state, which is uh, corrupted by the observation noise. And uh, it's the first is multiplied by the C matrix. And based on what we understand of the world, we make predictions of what is going to happen. And this prediction is based on our estimate of the world at the previous time point. And this prediction is also covered by this feedback noise, which is not accounted in the predictive coding theory. And based on this prediction that I receive and the observation at the sensory level, I come up with a, a linear combination of them as the residual which I send back to the brain for inference. So one thing about this whole model is that everything, we assume everything to be Gaussian noise and everything to be linear. So this residual is formed based on the observation and the prediction from the previous time point. And combining my previous estimate and this residual, I form the new inference. So uh, the constraints, the kind of constraints that I was talking about is first the feedback energy cost, which over here is nothing but an average uh, L2 norm of the predictions that I send. And the second is the feed forward energy cost, which is the average delta norm of the residuals. And our ultimate goal is to have good inference, which is the average difference between the estimate and the actual world state. And my total cost should be a linear combination of these three costs. And that's the uh, form problem set that we are looking at. And this can be solved uh, using the popular LQG framework where we uh, think of the control as the predictions more details I can talk about during the discussion if need be. And some of the interesting things that came out, out, out of this is that although I've not fully understood everything that's happening, a few thing, few takeaway points would be that there are settings in which actually sending predictions is not optimal because it could be because the predictions are expensive or it could be because the feedback channel is too noisy and so on. And another uh, interesting thing is that there are some non-trivial trends that we can observe. For example, uh, one particular plot over here is where on the x-axis I have the weight assigned to feedback energy cost. And on the y-axis I have how much, how much do I multiply the predictions that I get. So this, the interesting trends in which first it increases and then decreases. So uh, the key takeaway is that it's not at all trivial and there are a lot of uh, interplays and trade-offs involved. And this kind of framework helps us to understand that better. I can take any questions. Thank you so much, Lokesh. That's great. I, yeah, that, that was, I want, you know, it's hard to explain such a dense topic in such a 
short amount of time and i think it's a really good job uh, i don't see any questions yet but i'm going to ask a question um, and so when you're talking about uh, a linear um, gaussian states and um, and um, and prediction, then the prediction correction framework obviously a camera filter comes to mind uh, Yeah. but but in that case there is no in a camera filter framework there is no feedback cost or free forward cost or inference cost so that's that's what right. you're adding over here so right. just like a a camera filter is there and that is there one closed form solution for an optimal linear estimator in in this kind of framework yeah uh, so in fact we are also in fact kalman filter is what is exactly happening here as well it's just mm-hmm. that i have a uh, kind of massage the parameters and the problem set up in a way that it mimics what happens in the linear quadratic gaussian setup uh-huh. where again the estimates are formed using the kalman filter so uh the kalman filter is very much relevant to this and uh it's it, it's not kind of straightforward as to how it should be applied uh but that's what is happening here got it right. uh i'm sorry uh, go on arthur Uh, yeah it's just um i'm trying to understand I mean, could you comment on the three costs you have and and exactly what they mean and also maybe do you know what uh, impact each of these costs has separately on what you're looking at uh, on the right hand side sure yeah so the three costs that i have is firstly the feedback cost which is basically how much energy do i send spend in sending the predictions down the hierarchy and i define it over here to be the average l2 norm of the prediction signal that i send and uh, the second cost is the feed forward cost which is what is being sent back to the brain so that in over here is the residual and it's defined as the average l2 norm of the residual and the third one the most important one is the inference cost i'm doing the entire uh, exercise so as to come up with good estimates of the world so this measures how good is my uh, inference or the estimate of the world and one interesting example on the right side how this all translates is for example uh this plot over here the first plot over here on the x axis we have the uh the weight that i sent to the feedback that is the wf the coefficient of uh, how much do i weigh the feedback energy cost and if it's very very less what it means is that i can send very strong predictions that beats the noise in the channel because it doesn't cost me anything and by sending these strong predictions which are also reliable i can have my residuals which is the difference between the prediction and the actual state to be as less as possible so this would mean that i send very strong predictions and then i can uh, save on the feed forward energy cost and that's why we the control gain which actually uh, in a way measures how strong your predictions are it goes to like infinity and uh, and and that that's very useful because the energy cost is not there but if our energy cost is going to be really high if the feedback cost is going to be really high then it's not worth sending these predictions that's why it goes to zero over here so that's just one example of what's going on all right i'm not sure if that i made that clear uh we have another question from richard langer um and i'm going to be asking the question uh, what would be gained or lost by going beyond the linear gaussian case uh right uh, so much of this uh, solution for this problem was uh, was inspired by lqg and i think any any uh, non linearity that comes over there i'm not sure how to <laughs> really uh, do it yeah uh perhaps some kind of local linearization yeah is right. is obviously the way you know what you think of initially right um right. so i also have another question uh i guess from dimitra uh why do you have to assume linear dynamics is so that would be the similar type of answer i would imagine yeah, right yeah it's just said it's easier to work with um so just to wrap up i have um i had one other question that i was thinking of as i was looking at this um now i'm i'm good <laughs> uh no i i cannot remember but i will i will make sure to email you this is fascinating and thank you so much um, thank you thank you so much lokesh uh, are there any questions for lokesh going once going twice no nope. so thank you so much let's move on to the next speaker